So in a previous video, we looked at the Ego 650 CFM blower, and we did some troubleshooting on the controller. We got down to the MOSFETs being shorted on the controller. I'll show a little clip here from that video where we did some testing and saw it shorted. The 30 amp fuse was blown, so we decided to use the hot air, remove the MOSFETs, replace the MOSFETs. But the end result, after the MOSFETs were replaced and the short was removed, we went to test it and the BLDC was still getting kind of a bump at the start and the controller was faulted out. You could cycle the power and it would reestablish. It would try to run again, but it would do that bump. So after that, I felt it was best to maybe um, just to go ahead and try this cheap controller replacement and just see how it does on this one. So in this video, we'll take a look at adding this pretty neat and cheap BLDC driver. I'm kind of interested in how well this cheap BODC are running anyway, so I'm going to cut off the 50 volt cap. And I'm, um, I'm definitely going to tie in a 63 volt cap onto the bus. So just across our VCC and ground, like so, with the incoming power. And I'm going to figure out uh, exactly how I want to do the potentiometers. I'm not going to use this switch for the battery in place. I'm going to leave the inductor in place. Put it in line. Probably a good idea. I don't know if I'm going to use a turbo switch on this one or not. I'll figure it out as I go. So after a few minutes of cutting off some wires and connecting them, we got a pretty good test set up here. This is where I like to put a 30 amp fuse in here. Got the 63 volt cap across the input. So we're just gonna test it out here. Okay. So now I just gotta figure out how I wanna do the external potentiometer. And we can do this any kind of way we want to really. We can just make this do it all. We can let this be the um, start and let this be the control. We can do it however we want. So I'm gonna finish cutting this loose and see if there's any way I can easily tack on to this, the part of the potentiometer that's not going through the board. If I can easily get to that, then I'll use it. If not, I might just use the, uh, the trigger itself because I know I know right off how to do it. It's uh, zero to five volts through it. So. We'll study this a little bit and we'll be right back. I really enjoy these things in a way they kind of enjoy to work with. More like industrial type terminals, just easy to adapt. The only issue I've ever had with these, as I mentioned in previous videos, I have had that, what I'm calling a flyback. It's just a diode across the bus. It is kind of small, so I guess sometimes too much current on a quick stop. Sometimes I have had that diode to be taken out. So back now with this wired up in the configuration this I think works pretty well. We got the contact breaking the circuit from the five volt plus, then going through the potentiometer part and coming back. So even though it's confusing, this is five volts and this is ground, the colors are backwards. This is how this board worked out. Got yellow and green together. If I go to my blue, which should go back to my pulse width on my input signal, we see if I ease it in, we got all the way to our five volt. So that, that's a zero to five volt or zero to hundred percent operation. That really would work probably fine like it is. We can test it out. Just make sure it works the way I think it should. Remove the jumper. I didn't include this in my last video because I didn't know it. I actually took the pot off the board and soldered my potentiometer on. But if you remove the jumper and go to your five volts common and bring your own potentiometer wiper back to your PWM. It's kind of confusing, but that's exactly how you do the remote pot on this board. So I really, the more I learn about it, the more I like it. So we are powered up. Let's give it a test. So that is a setup just quickly drawn out like this where the push button from the plunger makes, and I got the green and yellow joined together. So it's, when you push it in, it's making it through to five volts. So the five volts is coming through this side, going back through to ground. 
and our zero to five is simply coming to the pulse width modulation. And that's all it is to it. That's just a wire nut. I just messed up on my drawing, but so as you push it in, that increases to five volts. That's pretty simple. The other thing I want to do is I've actually had this soaking in alcohol. And it, the more I pry on this, the luckier we get. So this is actually hot glue. So look at that pop right off. So of course that's one trick with hot glue. Um, isopropyl alcohol does very well loosening that up. I thought that was epoxy to start with. It actually didn't take no components off, so that's awesome. But the reason that's important is I, I have to solder on the connections here. None of these wires came straight off the pot because they were doing something a little bit different with this board. I'm just going to clip these wires a little bit closer so nothing will touch. And I'm going to solder off the points that I want to, including as I was trying to pull this knob off, this whole thing started shifting and I could see some contact points in here. So I realized that you can hear that click. There's a contact point in there as well. So we can use that contact and we can use the um, potentiometer if we'd like to incorporate it. We don't have to. This trigger will work zero to hundred percent like it is. So really don't need it. Or we could wire up something real similar to this drawing. We're doing basically the, you know, basically the same thing here is this switch is uh, taking our five volts through, back through the ground. Our signal now, instead of going straight to our PWM, it can go out and back through the wiper as a trim. And we also have a contact here we could do something with if we would like. If I thought the rating was high enough, that would be kind of nice to be able to use to, um, to cut the power on and off. I'm not sure it's rated for that. So we have a few options here. So looking at the back of this thumb wheel, it's got an off and then it, it turns all the way up. So the switch contacts are across here and here. And then our clockwise wiper and counterclockwise are right there. As you can see coming off like so. So we should be able to take this and incorporate in it in as well as we want to. So back now with this wired up similar to this with the thumb wheel wired in series with it on the wiper. So it's like this at this point. I have it plugged in. We'll do a test here going slow. Let's see this. That's all the way to off. So this should not be wide open now on range. I'm going, it's barely coming on and then. That definitely is not wide open. I just don't want to suck up anything here on the bench, so I might put it upside down. It might stay like that. So now if I try to bring this on really slow and try to hold this as steady as I can with no trigger on here. Now I'm going to rotate this knob. But that's working great. The reason it was pulsing was my finger coming off of this. So that was all. That was me there. On the trigger, it won't be near as hard to do. I think that's gonna be fine. So the reason I decided to leave these connected is I may end up taking this off and wiring this in place since it already had a neat place to store the same 63 volt cap. So I may or may not incorporate that. And on yours, you know, it's up to you how you do yours. So I think I'm gonna go with mine like this. Try to do all the wiring and put it back together now. At this point, I'm just gonna put this in for looks and to be a dust cover. I do not believe I'm gonna hook it up to be a, a turbo. With this turned all the way up, zero to 100%, or I can dial it back. I think it's gonna be just fine. I am gonna have to come up with a spring here. This one was missing when I got it. It goes like so. I'll come up with a spring. Spare, spare for something else.
So back now to save time on video, I'll probably skip a lot of the mounting this because um, it's, it's pretty simple. I just put tie wraps across here, at least for um, initial testing. I can definitely mount it another way. I had a little ribbon cable from another project I had, so I run it through for my signal wires and I, I just got them twisted together. I'm gonna solder them when I get done. I've extended out my yellow, uh, blue, and I just did a, did a black here for the phases and got those hooked up with factory connectors. I got the power ready to hook up. Might be just a tad out of camera here, but I got all my power stuff ready. So all I gotta do is just tie my, my power in and we're pretty close to being ready to test this thing with it hooked up the way we got it. And I'm just doing this temporarily here just to make sure that this capacitor works out okay where it's located. I could definitely have it in here and just tie wrap it as well. Just something else hanging in here. So we still kept our inductor. The only thing I don't have yet is I don't have a Maxa Blade fuse holder. And I am going to use a 30 amp uh, Maxa Blade fuse because you may know that at least some models of these Maxa fuse are rated for up to 58 volts. I could just temporarily solder onto here, but I got a fuse holder coming, so it'll, it'll go in the spot right here. Make sure nothing's touching. Bring over our pack. <laughs> Charge the cap. So, ended up nipping out here. You may remember it had the little vents here. Even though I don't believe that the, the original uh, speed controller had enough airflow here, you can tell they tried to do those little slits or vents for the airflow, I guess going through here. Not a whole lot of airflow, but, but the reason I did it was just when I run the wires through there, I didn't like how tight it was on the wire, so I just I just went ahead and knocked it out. And the, the frame is pretty strong without it, but if I decide that's not strong enough, I will come back and just put the bottom base on this that came with it that actually will strengthen that same, the same housing part up. So just thought I'd mention that. So we are powered up. Let's see if it'll work. Yep, it does work. Let's turn this up to max. It should have a little better response. Yeah, yeah, a lot better. A lot quicker response to the button. Oh, yeah. Cool. So I'm just going to take time now and um, solder all my connections and put heat shrink on them. We'll do a final test before we assemble. So back now with a small wire, just soldered up and heat sleeved over the easy way. Just got all my triggers and stuff back on here for a quick uh, test fit. So this is kind of what it looks like. So not terrible. I did this even though it restricted a little bit of inlet air. I want a tremendous amount of airflow to go across this heat sink because this uh, BODC controller is definitely being overdriven. I left my leads a little bit longer for my motor because I had so much room here, but um, I used it up pretty quick. So one quick update before I show this thing running, because I have tested it and it runs fine, but I did have one failure. This XL Semi XL7005A, this little eight pin look DC DC converter chip, it did fail on me. And I'm kind of perplexed about that because I know I went above the uh, 50 volt rating of the board and I, um, I added a 63 volt capacitor and I looked up the data sheet on this chip as we can see here. This chip actually is not one I was worried about. The voltage level is well above our 60 volts in. I was not expecting this chip to fail. I've had a diode fail on my 530 CFM blower on that, uh, on that controller retrofit. But on this one, it ran fine. Then it failed with this chip. Um, I'll have a little bit of video up here of me replacing that chip. Just a little quick clip of it because it, it took a while to go through all this. But... But anyway, after a failure of that chip, I did add another capacitor on the bank, on the DC bus, as well as my little MOV and resistors. 
for like a break if um if the voltage does exceed i think that's a 68 volt mov so it's somewhere around 68 volts it should start conducting across the resistors so kind of like made a little brake module if you will without using mosfets uh, mosfets probably the, the best way to go with like a zener diode and a mosfet i'm going to try this first with just the mov and then i think on the last part of the video i mentioned i was going to order some maxi blade fuse holders for the for the 30 amp a 58 rated fuse i wanted to clarify that and dimensions uh they're way too big for this area so i ended up just soldering this in it's more of a one-time fuse it's going to be fine but I would have rather had a fuse holder, of course. So that's where I stand with this. I'm actually going to put the repair board in it and put all this back together. I'll just show some videos of it running, so. Don't forget, I'll have some links in the description for these little BLDC controllers if interested. So I hope you like this video today, looking at this BLDC controller retrofit on this 650 CFM Ego Blower. If you like this video today, please like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching.